<laughs> confirming. <laughs> not only do you test web pages, but you test audio quality. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Rock on. Thanks everybody for jumping on. Yeah, this is we. Chris and I were just chatting. This is our new first try bringing someone else on the streams. So we're trying out a whole new system, no software that Chris recommended. So we were like, you know, trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's uh, so far so good though. That's awesome. Yeah, it does. Looks great. How you doing, Tim? Not too shabby. How you doing, man? Good. We go way back, don't we? We're from the same state. It's yeah, yeah, we are. It's yeah. tough to find fellow. That's not tough. I mean, it's kind of tough. There's not a lot of like fellow Wisconsinites doing this. I'd so yeah. I think that's kind of a thing. Yeah, it was, I don't know. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool to see you land at, at web page test. What? A, Cause you've been into perf a long time. And then I yeah. remember hearing that you got the gig over there and I was like, a uh, perfect job. <laughs> Thanks man. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it's, it's felt, Perfect. It's been, I've been telling people it's been the most seamless transition I think ever. It's like going from using it every day, all day as part of my work to working on it wasn't a very big shift. Like, right. So, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. We're going to use it today, aren't we? Because yes, I we are. Yeah. I roped you into doing some. <laughs> I thought we roped you in either analysis. way. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have a look at CSS tricks um, yeah. without much of a plan. So if you're listening, not, not that not a not a zero plan, but like a, we're going to decide together what's important to test and all that. And honestly, like it's like I care about performance. I look at it and stuff, but it's been a minute since I've done like a performance sprint on CSS tricks. So I am both nervous and I know that I'm going to be embarrassed at some of the stuff we find because so, some days I just, you know, or weeks or months, I just kind of let it slide. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is with like, sorry, I think I blipped away there for a little bit too. Um, yeah, the thing is, I think like that's, this is a no, this is a no uh, insult, no blame sort yeah, of thing, no, right? Like everybody, like I, the thing I tell people all the time, and it's like, because it's true, is I've totally worked on projects where... And I'm a performance nut, right? Like, and I've done projects where at the end of the day, like we've looked at and I'm absolutely mortified by, you know, something that got missed or some performance hiccup that we just didn't have time to address. Like, I think we've all been there. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, well so I'm just yeah. going to, I'm just, I've prepared myself. That's all I'm telling yeah, you. No, that's that, good. Yeah. That just whatever we you know, find, build up for find. it. And for everybody listening, I think we're going to have a public document, not public right this second, but it's shared between Tim and I, where we're going to write down all the major stuff that we find, and then I'm going to do my best to fix it. So at the end of this thing, I hope to have kind of a checklist of, you know, maybe perhaps my worst transgressions and a plan for fixing them. And then and I'm going to do it because why wouldn't I do it? You know, performance is irrelevant if all you do is measure it you know you measure it and then you fix it right yeah the fixing is an important piece for sure yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right it doesn't do so much good otherwise yeah yeah um i i see it kind of so for uh just for format and stuff as questions are coming up we'll kind of address them i guess as they make sense some of it might come out as we're digging into css tricks itself too so i don't want to I kind of want to balance that, but we'll take the note to make sure that we circle back to anything we don't catch. Sure. Um, we can do that. I might want to, so CS Tricks is a blog, obviously. It runs on, for people listening that are wondering what we're about to profile, it's a WordPress site that's not particularly weird, I don't think. It's like a the theme is, just is what it is. Uh, or like it's custom theme. It's not like I picked a theme off the shelf. It's all a hand coded theme, but I don't, it's not like a next JS site and I hit the WordPress API or something like that. It's PHP, MySQL runs on the host flywheel. It's just, it doesn't, it's, there's no single page loads. It just loads what it loads. Look, look at Tim doesn't even use an ad blocker. What a hero. <laughs> you, see, so you can see ads are loading in there. There's code pen embeds there. I'm going to be asking Tim about those because that's cur I'm curious what kind of performance impact they have. Mm -hmm. um, so that's about what we're look at here. And then I do, you know, like I host my images on a CDN, but I'm curious to see what Tim thinks of that. Like, is it is that effective or not? And Cloudflare sits in front of it. I'm sure nice. that's a common, you know type of thing. I even use Cloudflare as a special kind of WordPress plus Cloudflare connection. And the way I understand it is that that helps it cache 
HTML as well, which is a little tricky in CDN land, right? Can be, yeah. If it's like, uh, yeah, for a di more dynamic pages, it certainly can be, or if you're updating a lot. Right. And I think what it does is that, like, if I update a post, then it kind of like tells Cloudflare, hey, break your cache on that HTML. I, I think, I don't you know. So I just wanted to give a little background about what, like, the back end of it. And if anyone yeah. has any questions infrastructurally of CSS tricks, please, you know, I'm happy to answer. I'm not, not no, no secrets to the CSS tricks. Uh, awesome. infrastructure or anything. Um, how many, when you're talking, let's look from a traffic perspective too, Chris. I mean, I don't need like exact numbers and stuff like that, but like, you know, breakdown of like where folks are coming from. Like, is it all you, is it dominantly us? Do you have worldwide traffic? And then uh, what about mobile versus desktop? That th that's good stuff. I, w I almost wish I could, uh, just share Google Analytics with you. Maybe we could wire that up, but I'll just do high level first. Analytic D desktop versus mobile is nuts in the in the opposite of industry standard direction, where I feel like mobile has heavily overtaken desktop in on like most websites. If that's a fair thing to say, totally not the case on CSS tricks. It's like one or two percent mobile traffic and like 98% oh. desktop. So it's kind really of one of those bonkers. things where, like, of course, I'm still like make the site responsive yeah. and test on mobile. And believe me, if I screw up something on mobile, I'm going to hear about it kind of thing. But <laughs> as far as like primary, it's 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 desktop. Yep. And yeah, that's just the way it is. Just I'm I've it's typical across my other sites too because I I feel like it's whatever it means, developers these days, while they're doing their job, I have the kind of websites of during their work day kind of developer stuff, which I just imagine is still a pretty desktop heavy, heavy thing. Fair. We're looking at about 10 Makes million sense. page views a month site wide. So it's a healthy, healthy kick, but it's, you know, it's not the New York times, obviously it's, but it's, you know, it needs respectable. It can, I cannot throw it on $5 a month hosting, you know, right. the, you know, there's gotta be, there's gotta be some strategies involved. And I think the, Cloudflare helps a lot with that, but it's on flywheel hosting and they have their own caching stuff too. It wouldn't be required. I think it would probably be okay on my host, but I'm anything where I can like get per cheap performance. I'm all about it. You know, like that, you know, this isn't, this isn't a Cloudflare thing, but I the fact that I can just toss that in front of the site and get so much for like five bucks or zero bucks. I'm like, uh, yeah, well, even just ship cheap it. from the, even just cheap from the, in terms of the amount of work you have to put into it is a big thing, right? Like right, right. being able to slap something in there, you know, that kind of takes care of, you know, images and caching and a whole bunch of other stuff yeah. without you ever having to think about that stuff is huge. It is. It reminds me of things like, uh, not like, loading equals lazy on an image or whatever. I'm like, really? I can put one attribute on an image and it buys me like a whole bunch of free performance. Uh, sure. I'll take it. Um, okay. Did you, what, what other questions did you have about analytics? So let's see, we talked, uh, and then is it like, what about the breakdown in terms of geography? Did we talk about that? Like, is there uh, anything funky there or is it mostly us Europe? Uh, it's certainly there's a bunch of us, but I can just, I can just look cause I happen to have it open. Oh, give me a little map, please. Language, location. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of India because there just is. Yeah, that's my number two by a India. very slim margin. So U.S. Okay. is number one, and then just a less than one percent smaller difference is is India. Okay, all right. So that's cool. And then yeah, U it's UK bad. is after that. It's a big drop down to to the U.K. and Germany after that. So, you know, with your site too, with the amount of traffic, actually, I bet. There's decent crux data on it. Let's, the, let's look the, at that, Is that too. the Chrome user? Yeah, Chrome, Chrome. Chrome's user experience report, which is like perf data that they collect from an, like anonymous sessions mm -hmm. and stuff like that inside of Chrome. Um, I've got, because I'm lazy, I have a uh, custom search set up for this. Interesting, interesting. So if you type, so like, yeah, Google Chrome has like the ability to save like custom search indexes. So you could search or uh, search engines. So I save like that Google has this data studio um, for surfacing, you know, the crux reports and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you save that as a, in fact, maybe I can show that. Do, 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 preferences, uh, search engine. Uh, no, where are you here? Manage search engines. Look at you. Look at them all. 
I'm making this all up. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to zoom this in. Oh yeah, inside of Chrome settings, you can manage search engines and have like these custom search engines, right? Yeah. And so this one is the crux search engine. So it's triggered whenever you type crux in the uh, URL bar and hit space. And then it fills in with this URL, which is a just a quick link to this to Google uh, Data Studio report thing generator for crux data. And then somewhere in here. Did you, uh, who, who wrote this? this url masterpiece this is from i want to say this is rick Fiscomi who uh, did this okay. i do not remember at this point so it's not uh, that wasn't built into chrome this is some no is some no no you have trickery. to yeah you grab it yeah you grab the url and then it basically drops in uh the url here and yeah for a parenthesis s is what it's substituting the url for so anyway, that that ends up being able to do something like this and just drop it csstricks.com. Learn how to type and then boom. It takes you right to this. That's fascinating. That do you remember let's look at that, but do you do you remember open search? Open search.xml? I still have that yes. file on CSS tricks. Yeah. I feel like not a lot of sites have that, but the the point was that it would if you search specifically for CSS tricks, I can kind of intercept the, the the request and it'll send you to search on my site rather than search on Google. I do remember this, yeah. Yeah, this is tricky. It's still, I don't even think you need to add it to Chrome. I think you can do the thing like that on BBD. It'd be kind of nice. I haven't played with that for. Here, I'm going to grab the, well, since we're talking about it, just, not grab it. just copy. Chuck it in Maybe. chat for people. Yeah. 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 If anybody wants to use it, that's the URL. And uh, just drop it in chat. And you just, yeah, set it up with whatever keyword you want to do. But it's handy. So, yeah. Wait. So then this gets us like what Chrome is seeing, at least for your. Oh, this oh, is oh, like, it's like a PDF or what is that thing? Yeah. So this is like, this is Daddy Studio, which has all these nice little visualizations that they've kind of made out of the box for like dashboards to view your crux data over time. Um, and then, yeah, I think you can export it probably just as a PDF pretty easily out of here. Uh, okay. So that's are we looking at my site right now yeah we're looking at css tricks right now oh my gosh so this so, is like i do this like we have access to your analytics i don't know if we have access to like a lot of perf data on your stuff but like i do this if um so if i was ever consulting with a client right and i didn't have they didn't have real user performance data or anything going on for monitoring this is only chrome this is like chrome only traffic so it's not perfect but it does give you like, at least you can start to poke at it a little bit and say, okay, like in the real world, what is the browser seeing in terms of these key metrics? You also get things like your device distribution, like mobile versus desktop breakdown. And yeah, so they're seeing a little less mm. Chrome centric, at least a little, you know, still like 74% desktop mm. or like the connection mm. is another one, you know, connection speed stuff. So you're looking at bulk of 4G, which is not too surprising. Um, five percent, three G, kind of hanging on for a while, and then yeah, some of these key metrics mm -hmm. along the way. So it's nice. That's a lot. So there, and then and anybody can see this. So oh, there's nothing. Yes. I'm sure they've tried to be. I don't know. That's weird. It's it feels like a like a slight privacy weirdness. Well, and, yeah. So this is what weirds people out. Is usually more on the actual like measuring part of it because they are measuring it from real Chrome sessions. But like, I think you have to be. There's like things you can, I don't remember. Yeah, I I'm not totally, I mean, this is not exposing traffic yeah, yeah. or anything. It's no, they're trying to avoid that. that. Get yeah. anyway. But even the device, I don't know, I, 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 whatever. We don't have to talk about that. Yeah, but, no, that's so fine. what I'm interested in is this. So everybody cares about web core vitals, right? Cause Google told yeah, yeah. us that we have to care about it. <laughs> so what does that mean? The green and the yellow, the red, I mean, it, it's not immediately clear to me what that means. Sure. Does it, my guess is that whatever 73 percent of people have a good lcp experience and 15 percent of people have a bad one or whatever yeah so this is the they put thresholds for each of the core web vitals like if you are below a certain threshold like for largest contentful paint if your largest contentful paint fires in less than 2.5 seconds it's a good experience okay. if it's over four seconds it's a poor experience and if it's kind of in between the two they say it needs improvement 
So what they're doing here is they're signaling like, yeah, 74, 73% of desktop have good LCP for desktop sessions that they're seeing. Uh, about 15, 16 are in that sort of needs improvement middle range. And then you've got about 10 and a half that are kind of in the poor range. So you can't just solve this. You can't make that whole bar green because somebody's going to visit your site with a super, super slow internet connection. And there's just nothing you can do about that. Right? It's you can try to shift the green as much as you can. But yeah, I mean, there's like, I think that's the goal. The goal is not necessarily shoot for a hundred. Like if you can nail a hundred, hats off to you, right? Like, obviously that's amazing. But like, I also think that's fairly unrealistic expectations for most folks, right? Like, mm. But if you can get, yeah, I think the goal is just trying to get that green bar as wide as possible um, and minimize the red. Like a hel the healthier situation is more red and orange. Yeah, well, right. But if you had a site that just so happened, remember that, uh, I probably learned this from you. There was like some YouTube experiment where they fixed the homepage and made it way faster, but then their numbers plummeted because it, yeah, yeah. it turned out that more people from... Yes. Places with really slow internet got that. So you could make a bunch of good changes here and see your see your red and yellow oh, sure. go up. Yeah, that's the whole like the metrics that that's my it is like my favorite performance case study, right? Like they built a version of the page that is like instead of one meg, it was like hundred K or something like that. It was ten K, ten K it was. It was, mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, it was tiny, right? To get the initial load. And yeah, they checked their metrics, expecting things to look great. Uh, performance metrics look terrible. And to your, what Chris just said, yeah, they, it was literally just people coming from geographies and locations where they couldn't use YouTube before um, were able to use the Feather version. And so it, the metrics yeah, all cool. got skewed. And they're the only one that have written about this. But anecdotally, there are a lot of folks who have like told similar stories behind closed doors. They're just not allowed to talk about the data. So that is, that is a good mm. thing to always keep in mind is like, if you make big perf improvements, um, don't be too surprised if you see, you know, like engagement or other things kind of pop up, but not so much yeah. your perf data. I didn't mean and to poke holes. Somebody in dropped this. I just a link. Think that's there. interesting. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. cool. Somebody um, dropped a link in a comment there. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, wonderful. So, but so I want to see, I want to look at this how you look at this because you've yeah, seen yeah. it way more times yeah. than me. When you see the charts you're looking at now for CSS tricks, are you like, ooh, ouch? Or are no. you like, yeah, it's fine? No, I'm not. I've seen like, yeah, no, it's pretty much, it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I think we probably, what this is telling me is first off, like pretty much everybody has a good first input delay. That metric is just way too forgiving. So I kind of ignore that one. Yeah. Um, but your CLS is looking pretty good. Looks like maybe there's some minor things. I'm guessing there's not going to be much that we're going to find. Your largest contentful paint around 73% um, mm. is not like it's pretty good but i would say that if we're in that 73 and that 65 percent that's probably hinting that there are going to be a few things we can do to like make some good. decent improvements there hopefully um yeah i mean that's mostly what i'm looking at here is sort of what's the opportunity and it's also interesting to see the time thing like there's a a shift here over time from the month to month data when it comes to lcp2 yeah. i just have a guess if you click over to css tricks yeah, let's do it that this is today is going to be a bad day because look at that animation <laughs> happening. Yeah. It's not every day that we chuck a yeah, GIF yeah. up there. Yeah. I have a feeling the LCP is that element probably. Uh, it's, it you know, might be in this case. We can find out quick. Yeah. Let's um. Well, let's do it. Let's fire up a couple tests. So first off, like homepage, right? And we'll keep yeah. it. Yeah, we can talk about testing other pages, but let's right, let's get okay. into it with the homepage. The homepage is also our. It's in the top five for sure for traffic. So I know that's not true of every of every site, but it's a it's worth testing on CSS tricks for sure. Yeah, so uh, I'll get that running in the background just so it fires off a little faster. But what we did is just went to web page test, drop in the URL. We got a bunch of different test locations. Um, so we're choosing just one of the ones out of the US here, Virginia, uh, Chrome. Connection, I tend to avoid the cable connection for most testing um, just because like Is cable and, and one? yeah, it's a little too fast for me. Like I want a little bit more latency um, mm -hmm. just to kind of slow things down and exaggerate your performance issues um, because it just makes them easier to spot that way. Okay. So uh, default desktop browser dimensions were fine. Three tests for the sake of speed. 
and then test first and repeat views. So we're gonna it's gonna load the CSS tricks fresh mm -hmm. without any cache, and then it's gonna reload the page with the cache in place so we can see kind of you know. If there's I think that's a hugely there. big deal, right? I think there's a yeah. lot of a lot of performance data is tracked on that first view, which I'm sure is very important, but it seems sure. like there's a lot of websites where the r actual experience of using the website is clicking around the website. Oh yeah, which is why like, yeah, especially, I mean, even think like an e-com site, right? Like yeah. you're gonna have this sort of flow. So really sort of testing the, the landing page is important, but then also checking like, all right, so if I move from my category to my product display to my checkout, like what's the experience like for each of those different steps along the way? Right. Yeah. Like I am not like a single page app apologist or anything, but it I think it does it's easy to poke at them for having a bad first page load and discount the idea that like yeah, but all the rest of those clicks are pretty slick. Yeah. Well, in the challenge there, like here's the challenge there is we don't know. Like we don't know what the rest of the pages look like because the browser has no current way to sort of have a standard way of measuring that because the JavaScript is taking over the routing. So there's nothing the browser can say next navigation is clicking right is happening and i can remeasure like all these other metrics like that's why for core web vitals if you're doing an spa you'll get your largest contentful paint on that first page load but once the spa it. is taken over that's it the rest of the sessions don't even really matter because mm -hmm. the browser doesn't know what's going on so without that it's also a little challenging for us to say like you know at scale does that work out? And it's probably a different answer for different folks, right? Too. Like if you're a, a site that gets like two pages per session, SPA probably not the right approach. You know, if you're going like 10 deep right. on a session, then we're starting to get pretty interesting, that kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's interesting. All right. So you ran it. We got I did. Some, we got some numbers. We do. Web page test famous for. <laughs> letter grains <laughs> <laughs> yeah if i brought that report card home i would have gotten ice cream <laughs> that night i'll tell you what what have you gotten in trouble that's no. not that's not that bad it's only one c chris no. it's all right no it's fine i don't even what does this say i want to get cash is static that blows my mind i would have thought that would have been yeah so if we click on anyways you get these uh at least a little bit of a list of what's going on so my yeah favicon is... is a problem get out of here man come on man Got to cash that thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> most of this, though, this is pretty much what I would have guessed before looking even. Really? Most of this is like third party stuff. Third party things are kind of notorious for having pretty bad. Right. Because they want the latest version. If they're shipping something super fast or out, they want it to kind of deploy quickly. Like mm -hmm. that doesn't surprise me too much. There's not much going on here that's actually problematic that you have control over. Yeah, I mean, there's some though, you know. Yeah, your favicon, you could bump that up a little bit. But what's this here? Uh, I don't have any idea. Perfect. CDN CGI. Well, that's the first Great. time I've ever seen that URL. So fun. That's fun. What are we looking at though? What are we? We're just saying this is just caching. Oh, this is the thing I got. Yeah, see this is just here. the caching, just to see what the grade was. So this is just like if you're seeing any of these grades and you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. You can click on it and get a bit more detail. Okay. You're looking pretty healthy though. It's it's just the stat the static sure. content and most of that's the third party. And we don't even know like the ch th that is a totally different metric than this core web vitals like core web may not even care at all about those things right that like the fact that my favicon is in cache that doesn't factor into any of those three metrics no no the way to think about those grades is they're sort of think of them as a health check right like they're checking for potential low-hanging fruit or signals that are pretty common for things being a little slow um but they're not necessarily right there's no guarantee that if you go out and you fix that you know, static content, it's going to actually move the needle on the metrics you care about. In fact, looking at that being most of those third party things, I'd almost guarantee it's not going to. Um, okay. But okay. yeah, it's still it's fun, still though, fun. right? Yeah, it can be a, a thing. There's a chance. Yeah. There's a little bit of satisfaction to get an A instead of a C. Well, what, but I, I do, I, pragmatically speaking, I really do care about the biggest things. I want to find the worst, well, I want to find the worst thing on CSS Tricks and fix it. Yeah. I like, I like finding the worst things. They're always more interesting. <laughs> I mean, so, okay. So if we're looking at your homepage, there's like this right here, this is where I start, yeah. right? For sort of what's going on. This is sort of the summary of just some key performance metrics for the page. Um, 
The yeah. web vitals, we do the same color coding just like Google, so we can see largest content. Full paint falls in that needs improvement range here. Great. Um, so that's a content. It's, it's a possibility for the is. worst thing. Yeah, and I think we might be able to find something there. Um, folks who have watched other streams know that, like, I also like to look at like the gaps on these metrics, which means like your first byte time is okay at seven hundred fifty-four milliseconds. But then we got a gap between that and when we start getting something onto the screen, this start render and first content full paint uh, numbers, which tells me like potentially there's some blocking resources sitting in the middle there that are slowing down, uh, you know, really when we actually get stuff out onto the screen. So let's one more time on that one. What yeah. are we looking at exactly? Yeah. So we got so the first byte time. That's the yeah. time that it takes to right to get a response back from the server. Uh huh. So when we've got a big gap between that. And when we're actually able to paint stuff out onto the screen, that tells me there's mm. there's something in the middle there that's slowing that process down. So if we've got a gap here, there's probably some resources that are blocking display, like some CSS, some JavaScript blocking, you know, something like that. And we'll find that out in a second. Okay. Okay. And that's Trump? so a second, almost two second gap is correct. That's significant. Yeah, that's noticeable enough that I bet there's something going on there. Um, okay. The other gap will be start like between that first piece of content um, and when largest content full paint comes out. We got about a 700 milliseconds, which isn't as significant, but um, you know your ideal, your dream state here is your largest piece of content comes out during that first content full paint, right? It's mm. the same thing, you know. So if there's a little gap, it means there's probably some fonts or an image or something that's kind of factoring in. I know you suggested the image, which it very well could be in this case. So we can take a look at that too. Um, and then the other thing I like to look at is this field data. So the crux report we just looked at from Data Studio is yeah. based on like your entire site, like all CSS tricks pages, it's kind of all mixed up. What we do is when we run a test, we look at, so in this case, the home page, we query the crux database for CSS tricks like this specific URL on a desktop in this case, because it was a desktop test and then report what the data is for this home page on desktop. And this way we can kind of compare like the results of web page test to what Google is seeing just to see like is the web page test result overly optimistic, is it a little pessimistic or is it right on? Okay. So here we're actually a little pessimistic, but I'm okay with that because again yeah. it's sort of like about like exaggerating the performance impact so we can see what's going on. Like in the field this home page seems to do pretty good. It's in the good threshold for everything. Uh -huh. So it might be at some other pages being a little bit more issue, uh, of a problem, which we can dig into. But yeah. All right. All right. So let's uh, jump on. Um, let's do the largest content for paint right away since that one jumped out. Yeah. So we, I'd love to just know what it is. Isn't there? I feel like I've seen trickery around that just kind of like just point at yeah. it for you. Like there, yeah. that's that's the thing. So let's click on that. Oh, this will take. Yeah, this is that. the vitals diagnostics page that we've put together. Uh -huh. So we try to grab a screenshot before and after. Um, this is a desktop test, which means our frames per second for the screenshots that we're taking are actually pretty. They're pretty spaced out because we can record at sixty frames per second on desktop, but there's a lot of like overhead and it slows your test down. If it's mobile, we can actually just use like the device's camera, which is pretty sweet. So we can have a bit more fidelity there. Wow. But that's why, like on the desktop, you'll see sometimes things like this. Like we know the area where LCP was, but it's not showing exactly the image, and that's just because of the resolution of how quickly we recorded those screenshots. Okay, okay. That that's said, exactly where I would have guessed. It's the big yeah. ass image I put yep. on the home page, right? Yeah, exactly. And I that's where put this any comes in too. That. Yeah, it, it is the GIF. Mm -hmm. GIF. Like, so yeah, so we give a little bit of a, I, I like to offend everybody. We've got a little bit of a summary there that like, so in this case, yeah, it is the image you expected it was, um, a little bit of the outer HTML just to help folks kind of ID. Okay. And then this waterfall is truncated at the point where largest content full paint occurs. So there's no activity after. And we highlight, since it's an image, we highlight the image that we identified as the thing that triggered it all. So yeah. Huh, 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 huh. So yeah, they, the first thing I notice is that why isn't it? It doesn't seem to be loading from the image CDN. It seems to be loading from CSSTricks.com. So this that's, is correct. Where are your other images coming from? Well, they're at, binary. See that? Yeah. Well, no. no yes, yeah, yeah. sometimes. Sometimes okay. if oh, see the uh, nine through 
14 or whatever. Okay. Yeah. That's the WordPress CDN that I use. Okay. Okay. But those, look at that doesn't seem to be loading images from. No, I was going to say your images all look like they're coming from. But I mean, so far, CSS tricks WP content uploads, they're not actually getting routed through whatever CDN thing you got going on here. Well, let's, can you verify that by going to the, just open it in the browser quick yeah. and view source on one? Sure, man. You'd think it would, I would think, oh, you're going to just dig in there. Yeah. I'm just going to do actual view source, taking it old school. Right. That is old school. Yeah, that's a problem. So that's, I have no idea why that isn't working, but there's more than just that top one. Can you look at the ones below too? Maybe it's just that one, because that top area is kind of uniquely coded on the okay. site, whereas the cards below. I'm oh, curious. So now you are going to make me actually use DevTools so we can hop around a little easier. Okay. I'll just scroll down and grab one, like of, the one of these things. And, no, keep going a little okay. further. Those. All right. Are those coming on the CDN? See that? Yes, those are handled properly. See, they have a source that's my site, but then the source set has the actual oh, okay. CDN on it. So is, but so is web page test smart enough to like know which one of those was downloaded? Yeah. 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 So web page test records the actual, like what's happening on the network from the browser. So yeah, I can tell exactly which one of those actually came in. So this is a big deal because it's just broken, right? Like we found a first very major wrong thing on CSS tricks is that top one is failing to get routed through the CDN, which has all kinds of problems. It's not optimized. It's not serving sure. in the most optimal format. It doesn't right. have source set on it. Um, yeah. And you've also got, um, oh no, I guess it's, it, well, it's, was that actually in the source? Because I'm seeing like you have like, uh, okay, you've got loading eager, which is good, like the loading attribute. You have these lazy image things, but I'm guessing you're not actually doing anything with, because. Loading eager is, I think it's flopped out because it's in view, but I bet if you viewed source and found that, it would say now we're gonna have loading to lazy. Today. Okay. I think, because I Let's think. Have a look. I think there's some JavaScript involved that I was typewriter. Okay. So let's look at this. Yeah. If you scroll over, does it say, ah, okay. Loading lazy. Yeah. It just gets flopped out when it's in okay. view because some JavaScript gets involved. So that's a little bit good, but it, it will probably almost never matter. Right. Because well, so actually this is one of the things that I would jump out right away. Like to me, mm. there was, um, this is super timely. There was do, 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 do. This post from Rick Viscomi and Felix aren't over at Google. Uh, basically, they were mining like HTTP archive data. Okay. And um, what this does, what they found was that basically uh, for where, uh, WordPress sites, specifically WordPress sites, actually, okay. um, where lazy <laughs> loading gets applied to... Uh, Everything. all of the images um, that actually slows down the largest contentful pain because what lazy loading does is it's the browser has to actually like it just introduces another step which means it's going to actually to load that image uh, at a lower priority or I guess queue it up later than it would have um, uh, which is what you want for p images that are out of the viewport for okay, images okay. that are in the viewport though it's kind of messing and, and delaying that request a little bit so Actually, one of the first things that we could do, even without moving it on to your CDN, is get rid of that loading lazy on that first one. Um, and they talk about that in this case study. I think, what did they see for a uh, yeah, do, 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 do? If they fixed it, they saw like a yeah, 14, 18% disc difference uh, wow. reduction in LCP at aggregate. And this, by the way, is getting rolled out to WordPress core or something in WordPress. I don't know where um, in WordPress. Yeah, how would it know? Like, how would WordPress n Well, I think know? what they're going to do is take a basic approach of, like, ignoring the first... Just the first one. Yeah, the first the one source. or two. Right. I, I don't remember exactly what they settled on here. There's a WordPress wow. post that goes with it. Um, but that I would like be one I like it, though. Thing. That seems to make sense to me. Yeah, yeah, you want... Lazy loading is great for the other images, but on the ones that are in the viewport, we don't want that. 
Yeah, I mean, what I'm imagining is that thing, like your HTML arrives, the browser starts reading the HTML, it finds, it, it does, what do you call it, the preloader or whatever, it finds URLs mm -hmm. that it should start requesting right away, images being a big one, and it starts getting them right away. And maybe what you're saying is when lady, lazy loading is on that, it, it like, it's like, okay, I see your URL, but... I'm going to chill. I'm not going to get it right away because. Yeah, and it's not like exactly. And it's not like a massive difference for the in viewport ones because it determines fairly, you know, eventually yeah. that it's sitting within the viewport. But yeah, it does delay it enough that, you know, the impact is noticeable in the waterfall. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, and look at the design of CSS tricks. It's big. It's large. It's right there. Like it's oh, not, yeah. it does not need to be lazy loaded. Yeah. All right. That's a big, that's a big yeah. one. Thanks. So let's, yeah, I would never say like found that myself. right away. Like, yeah, you've got a couple of things, right? Like throw that image on your CDN, see what happens there. Yeah. Uh, get rid of the loading lazy thing. Yep. Like just make that eager or whatever. Um, where's our I'm hopping around tab. Is there a difference tab. between eager and nothing? Should I just remove it or should yeah, I you put can just go and eager? Yeah, yeah. You can just pull the attribute entirely and you're fine. Okay. That's uh, identical to eager. I don't, there's probably some browser mechanics. Somebody in the chat here who may have already looked could potentially like, I don't know. I thought I saw some, who did I see? I don't know if Anthony, if you've looked into that or something like that, I haven't looked closely enough. There's might be something mechanically different, but I don't think from like practicality purposes, I think it comes out in the wash. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. We, we found a good one. Should we move yeah. on or are you? Yeah. Yeah. Ready? No, that's, that's good. Okay. The other thing though here is, um, What's interesting is, okay, kind of, so that's this request, like it's big, it's coming a little late, you know, the CDN could help with that a little bit, the removing the loading attribute. Um, yeah. But then is it there's green because you clicked on it or is it green? No, it's it... green because we highlight it right away because we know that's your LCP image. So we want to make sure you yeah. can spot it right away in the waterfall. What a nice touch. Thanks, Good job. Man. Thanks, man. And what's the what's the yellow one? Because just because we're talking about highlights. That's a redirect. Ones. So in okay. this one, yeah, this is pretty part of the course for like this is how that works, right? So you're pulling in fonts from topography, which mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a CSS file that's uh, that's going to what respond with like a redirect. I think the point is that I yeah. actually host that file, not them, you know, so they, I have to link to them because they have to like approve the redirect, meaning sure. I, I'm actually yep. paying for the fonts I'm using, but they which, don't do me the justice of actually hosting the fonts. <laughs> <laughs> right, which the problem with this, like the, the part of this that doesn't work out super, super well for you um, is this we can kind of let me zoom in on the waterfall and kind of we're looking at line 15 here and line 22. so 22 is the css for the fonts right now css is render blocking by default which means okay. we can't get anything onto the screen until your css has been arri like arrived and it's parsed and we figure all that out uh -huh. and just at this waterfall by the way this green line that we see here yeah what's that that's when first paint first occurs. Paint, yeah. So you'll notice that doesn't happen until after that CSS and after a little bit of JavaScript executions here and there as well. Okay. But so what ends up happening is you have to go out and you make your connection to cloud.typography.com to get this, like make the request. It returns a redirect. Um, and the redirect that returns is for this file here. Yeah. So now you've got the cost of this initial connection plus the font plus the actual cost of bringing in that CSS file itself right? Um, in terms of time. So there's like a piggy, like a mm. daisy chain event here that ends up pushing out your start render a bit, which is not ideal. No. Okay. That's cool. I mean, they I, there's like literally no alternative. No, there that. might not be other than, can you, you might be able, can you proxy that on Ooh. Cloudflare workers and then potentially yeah. get rid of the, the connection I don't think, call? Actually, in this case, I don't. I don't think so, because that first request has to be to them, not to a, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm not understanding there. The good news is, though, that not that I necessarily dislike. In fact, I quite like the f fonts in use. I have a redesigned cooking in which that I have some fonts I like even more that I'm going to self-host. And I think th th from what I hear from the, the font loading experts of the world is that 
self-hosting fonts is almost always the way to go. Even if it's yeah. a, even Google fonts, it's the Agreed. way it's still the way to go. It, so. I mean, if, if for no other reason than the fact that you get rid of this like extra connection that's yeah. sitting in your like critical path, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to call it a medium problem in my yeah, document okay. here. A medium. You can do that. Um, so what, what, how would we characterize it though? Like the, 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 the I don't know, the CSS redirect. We'll just yeah. Basically it. the CSS redirect is slowing down your first content for paint here. Oh, Hey, yeah. Zach's in here. Nice. We should talk. Zach would be all about the font stuff here. Um, Zach did a bunch of type font loading work on CSS yes. tricks and uh, originally and then but then I really wanted to use these fonts and so that some of that got lost sorry Zach but we'll bring we'll bring <laughs> bring some of that that speed back you know sometimes just the ease of so you know what I've done for loading of these fonts is just nothing it's just whatever the hosting service for that font told me to do sure copy and paste this code put it in the head of your document use this CSS dot you know so I the advantage is I didn't have to think about it. There's no technical debt. The disadvantage is this freaking waterfall, you know? Yeah. So I've got, and the thing is, I got feels about that. Like, you know, defaults matter, right? Like, people will right. stick with default systems. So this is why I think, like, it's the work that, like, Chrome has been doing around, you know, working with, uh, with WordPress or working with Next.js and, like, all these other things, ecosystems to, like, fix the issues and provide as performant default as possible straight out of the box yeah. is meaningful work because most people are going to do that. They're, they're yeah. going to take the path of less resistance. I mean, have you looked at Google fonts growth. lately? It feels like that's evolved yeah, quite yeah. a bit. These days when you copy it, they don't even they don't just give you a link to the CSS file. They give you these link rel preconnects to mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. new. that feels new. It feels like a good change. I mean, I don't know. There was a, which actually there was a question about pre-connecting to the domain here, but in your case, that's actually not going to help. Um, oh, so really? what pre-connect is for folks who aren't familiar, like pre-connect says, okay, mm -hmm. we know we're going to make a request to cloud.typography.com, open that request as early as possible, right? Um, like open that uh, connection, I should say, to that domain as early as possible. And that's this teal, orange, purple trio here is the connection cost. Okay. But in your case, if we look at the waterfall and where things are lining up, that happens right after that HTML arrives in your first line here. Yeah. Um, so pre-connect doesn't actually shift that connection over anywhere because there is nowhere to shift it to. Okay. So pre-connect wouldn't help here. Um, it wouldn't help me, but does it help the world generally? You know, like the fact that it's... Uh, if it's on the fact that it's on Google Fonts and they give it to every single user that copy and paste the code off of there, is it like yeah, that? So game? in the Google Fonts example, I think it does because I think Google Fonts, you're not, yeah, if I remember right, you have like one domain that you're connecting to to get the CSS and another for the actual font files. So having a pre connect to like the font file domain, for example, would provide a nice little performance boost. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. curious. All yeah. right. So we, we covered anyway. that. that LCP. Yeah. I mean, this was a fun journey so far already because we didn't even know what that my LCP was. We just knew that the data said that it was it could be sure. better. We're gonna find something. Then then we figure out what it is, and you you click on a link that says LCP, and it shows me a visually exactly what it was. We identify what it is. Then mm -hmm. we look in the source and be like, oh crap. You know, there's some obvious mistakes yeah. happening here. So that's satisfying. Then we just scroll down a little bit further in web page test and see some highlighted lines. That green one matches up with the color of LCP. So it's giving us even yet more information. Mm -hmm. We're clued into another problem, which is a redirect through CSS, which, you know, probably in super short term isn't anything we can do about today, but still is, you know, something to think about, you know, self-hosting fonts being a good idea and probably bringing that over. Let's say we took f line 15 and deleted it. Like I wasn't using those fonts at all. Would we see that green line hug hug back to the left a little bit? Do you think it's that big of a deal that it would? And let's find out, man. Um, let's go back home. Let's zoom out so I can see the thing here a little bit better. Uh, can, you, can you force my website to not have fonts on it? I then? can. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to test your homepage again. Same test scenario. I'm just going to label it uh, no fonts. 
And then there's a block tab here. Oh, wow. So, you so this isn't tricky. You don't have to write JavaScript or anything. Nah, You're just nah, going to nah. say cloud.typography.com. Just, yep, just drop that in. Nuke the request. We could even just do like a subset of the string. It's a substring, but this works yeah. fine. And then let's uh, test that again just, in the background. Just home. kick it again. How interesting. We'll see what we see what we buy from this just one change. Uh, I mean, I, I think we should find one more though. We got yeah, time that's fine. To find like another one. issue or another page? Yeah, just well, you know what? Let's do the page thing because we're we're doing the classic yeah. thing where you taste test the homepage, and I don't think that's I think that is highly trafficked and important enough, but. As I'm reminded by people all the time, a very common way to land on the site is one of the guides, like the okay. Flexbox guide or the Grid guide. Maybe just hit the search button there and then look for Grid. Uh, oh, I see you put it right up on top. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's just automatically ordered by traffic. So. Oh, thanks. okay, that makes thanks. sense. I was going to say, I somebody posted earlier that that's where they spend, you know, however many visitor sessions to your page are probably just them hitting these pages. Yeah, I have done the same thing. Yeah. yeah. This is beefy. It's just I think even the DOM is heavy on this page. It's full okay. of it's full of stuff. There is a bunch of detail summary as you've seen there. So that's yeah. that's interesting to me. I wonder, you know, I would think that the browser yeah, chills out on stuff within the details. Yeah, there's a lot of images, there's a lot of SVG, there's ads, there's it's a there's thing. Stuff. So this is gonna I would yeah, guess that it will be it would perform worse, you know, than the home page. But then how how different really is it? You know? Let's find out too. Yeah. All right, we'll get a test of that firing in the background. That'll be interesting. Um grid guy. There you go. Do -do -do. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. All right, so let's I think the other one is done with the cloud typography thing blocked. It doesn't actually change anything for your largest contentful paint, which I think we expected. Right. But that start render is looking a lot nicer. Like we can, and we can what? compare this to. Did we lose over a second? Yeah, we did. So if we Are go to test history. Are you kidding me? Wow. Let's grab these two oh, and you then can, compare you have some them. some fancy compare function because, of course, you do. Yeah, yeah, we do. So this is your no fonts version on the top. And this is the version with the. Uh, Look at it, it has scrolled over to the interesting part. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. So you can see it takes. And if we can go down here, like we can see, compare the actual waterfalls to see what's going on. So with the no fonts, yeah, it's just because we just removed. You see where that green line is, kind of where that paint comes yeah. in? It's just yeah. because we removed the dependency for the CSS here. There's right. no longer, and all of your JavaScript is already loaded, like loaded as non-blocking resources. So there's literally now you just your CSS for your styles, and that's it. And then the page is ready to display. Wow. So, so we really just threw everything else fonts under the bus that. there, didn't we? Sorry, fonts. Sorry. You did, yeah, I did. You did, you did a we bad did. for performance. I did a bad But for I the like people. them. So that's one of the most painful parts of that to me. Not that not that you can't achieve really wonderful typography without sure, performance you can. issues. It's just in my case I I, I chose bad. Um wow. That's okay. Something. Well thanks for showing me the comparison there. That's cool. And look at <laughs> I even yeah, got a B no for caching static content by crushing those fonts. Hey, too. you're doing better on this one. Yeah, it's moving up. <laughs> uh Okay, so yeah, no, so this one is the, this is the guide. All right, so I mean, it's still not like a total disaster in terms of like, you still in the green for the other core web vitals, like your start render is actually pretty similar. Your con largest count of the paint's pretty similar. It's not significantly, it's actually a lighter page than your home page in, uh, in terms of your weight. It's what it why. looks like, at least on this initial load. Like, are you? I don't know if you're lazy loading stuff as you scroll down, or. I mean, I, I would think that if the exact comparison is the home page, there's all those cards. Remember, I made you scroll down to look at those cards. There's kind yeah. of a lot of those cards, and all the images on the grid guide are little tiny lazy SVGs, loaded. too. They're they're little in size, and I think the the one the card images are. JPEGs and pings and stuff that are probably okay. just larger generally. Okay. That's my guess, but I don't you know. The data will show us, I guess. Yeah. So, so I mean, not, I guess not 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 terribly worse. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not your initial load experience. Whatever you've done to like offset the cost of that long page and all that content that's going on, 
oh, is working. The LCD um, is just that little stupid poster graphic. And yeah, yeah, bless it. Yeah. Good. Yep, that would be it. Oh, whatever. I make money selling those things. Rock on. So you can't argue with that. Um, so yeah, you've got the loading year, which isn't a problem there. That's okay. It's not lazy loaded or anything. It's just uh, your your fonts are back, wrecking havoc. Um, but other than that, it's again not significantly like. Yeah. What else do you see in this chart when you look at it? The the, you know. Yeah. So if I'm looking like at this stuff here, yeah. the waterfall, um, you do have. And this page has a little bit more going on in terms of the CSS, right? Like even beyond the fonts and the style, we have some stuff down here. Um, okay, so this is your code bed and pen embed related, right? Uh, yeah, and that one's that URL's tricky. That I th would think that means that there's an embedded pen, and the embedded pen has Perfect. another. CSS file in it that it loads. Yeah, so that's kinda... the way it would appear, right? Like it's yeah. the embed is know, somewhere in here. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Where is the embed in the waterfall? Well, it would be. I mean, it, one of a these. A couple of things that happens. Yeah, I guess it would be. Yeah, yeah it would be right. one of these. Yeah. So there's your embed. Okay, and then yeah, then it's pulling in the CSS for that. Uh, right, because it, like it itself is an iframe, and then there's an iframe sure. in the iframe to show the thing. Nice. So it's like that's that's I, I am kind of that was on my list of questions to ask you about is like how, you know, what what would you? What, I don't know if we have necessarily time to get into that, but if you loaded a page with a code pen embed on it and one without, how bad does the code pen embed mm. help it? And I'm also and also they on the iframes themselves it also they are they lazy load in the same way images do that's good right like do we do we even need to dig into that you put yeah no i mean iframes like by the just the way that they work they're not going to block your render or anything like that of the page they're going to be kind of what about on a web page test will it does it just load that top viewport or does it like fake scroll through the page or something so we didn't fake scroll here we can fake scroll um try so that can, yeah, let's do that. All That's right, for fun. Yeah, and Pat just pointed out here in the chat for anybody who's paying attention, like when we saw those blue requests in the waterfall, that means it's not in the mainframe, which is the iframe, oh. which is why we've got those other resources, so. I see, I see. Yeah, this is a, it's, <laughs> an, it's an advanced tool, is it not? It, it, it can be, yeah, it is, it is. There's a lot of stuff going on. I think there's like a lot of, uh, you know, little things that are kind of hidden secrets or things kind of tucked away that people don't realize it can do. So Ooh, one of the things a little bit of JavaScript to force. Yeah, that's scrolling. what I'm looking for here. Yeah, this. So one of the things we can do in it is um, script script. So it'll no, just not script. track in that JavaScript, not okay. script. Uh, advanced inject script. Sorry, scripting is like choosing like a flow. Like I want to script like navigate to your homepage and then oh, click on this thing and then go to there. Here we want to actually inject some JavaScript to tell the do something, right? So yeah, in this case, we're going to inject it and tell it to sort of basically scroll down the page. Sure. Um, I'd put a Bitcoin miner in there is what I'd do. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure Pat could jump in on the uh, chat and inform folks about the uh, all sorts of <laughs> funky things people have tried to do with web page tests. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we just called it tricks, didn't we? Tricks. Script guide. And these labels are mostly just, they're just for you. Like, for, so it's yeah. easier in the test history to see what's going on. Okay, let's yeah, that'll that'll be curious here. It's probably not the per, most perfect page for that just because some of the embeds and such are are buried in like detail summary things mm -hmm. which the scrolling sure. won't then reveal. But I am curious about this cuz the images for example will then the loading of them will be triggered and stuff. Right. I wonder if it changes the LCP, probably not, but maybe. Sure. Well, so LCP is going to be that largest piece of content. And I guess LCP technically is going to update throughout page session. Mm -hmm. ah, we'll see. See if you've got anything funky going on there. 
All right. Is there another test we can just look at real quick to see if there's any like real standout, just like use your super Tim vision and scroll up and down the test and see if there's anything <laughs> My horrible super Tim vision, super Tim vision, he says. Um, well, here, let's look at the, we didn't even look at the repeat view, right? So you've got a few things there that looked maybe at a glance here, kind of interesting. Uh, okay. So on the repeat view, so this is what it means like on a fresh cache, right? Um, mm -hmm. these are, or I'm sorry, once you have cache already in place, this is what people are still going to have to request if they now navigate to that page. So this <sighs> redirect again continues to just be a little annoying mm -hmm. because like you have to do that each time because there's no, what's our headers here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's the redirect every time. So you're going to have to go out and do the redirect every time to the actual CSS, which in this case, our CSS God, is really, that's page. really a bummer because this page should a repeat view should be so super much faster, right? Like 90% of the crap should be cached and yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, it would be right. Like if this redirect didn't occur, all your other CSS for like that main initial load, like yeah. site.css, even the fonts themselves that you're hosting are cached. So if this request didn't occur, you'd be putting your start render like right after the HTML arrives around like that 750, 760 Ooh. millisecond range here. Um, so you'd be blazing quick because none of this other stuff, you know, these, your embed, yeah. all that kind of stuff is going to kind of, it's not going to block your render because okay. it's not even right now. Okay. It's just that CSS that is. Yeah. Um, you could do some things like, what's your caching headers like on your CSS for yeah, your I mean, code pens? That's probably kind I of funky. Don't... Most people wouldn't have any control over that. I happen to be one of the people on earth that does have some control over that, but that's, it's, it's not something I can just go update for the yeah, yeah. 10 million users of CodePen real quick. Uh, it would have to be a very slowly considered thing. I'm sure thing. it would. Yeah. So then, yeah, I'm sure that would be a process. It would indeed. But the, so that's there's not that... a lot else. There's not a lot. No. Of, and, no. and so web page test, if, if it's a yellow line with a big red X on it, that's something to look at. Yeah. So the yellow line tells you it's a redirect. Um, ideally, you avoid as much of those as possible because it's just kind of wasted network time. Yeah. The, the little orange thing is actually a new thing that we have today where Chrome is like it was literally today. We put the post today? out about it today, wow. like maybe an hour before we jumped on. Uh, was like uh, Chrome now ships like they're indicating in the browser if a resource was render blocking or not. Okay. So if they're sending the blocking um, attribute on it, then we kind of acknowledge that on the uh, that status, and then we signal it here in the orange. Now you're getting a few false positives because I think this is probably Chrome version 91 still. Yeah. Chrome mm -hmm. version 91 had a little bug where like injected scripts were being labeled as blocking, even though they aren't, which is why oh, I see. these 5, 8, and 10, or 5, I guess, is the only one that really matters here because the other ones are in the iframe. 5 is being flagged as blocking, but we can see, obviously, the paint happens at the green line, so it's not actually blocking. But that's been fixed in V92, which comes out today. So, okay. um, but yeah, so if we ran this in like so, does that mean that an hour web page test? Did. Well, seriously, it's that fast. I don't. I, I don't know if it's an hour or not. I'm not sure when Chrome actually yeah. puts out V92 on desktop, but as soon as it gets there, our agents update automatically. So it is usually a pretty quick nice. turnaround. That's good to know that you can kind of trust web page tests for that. Yeah, try. All right. Well, I guess let's look at the scrolling one real quick. But yeah, yeah. I won't hold Woo. up anybody any longer. So here's your scrolling one. Oh. Okay, just kidding. I actually don't want to look at it. <laughs> All right. That was good. Folks, I'm in the stream. No, no. Okay. So two couple things here. Um, as Pat pointed out earlier uh, in the chat, like LCP is supposed to stop on input scroll. We're scrolling using JavaScript, which means that your LCP, this one might not be an exact thing here. Like if we looked, I mean, we went back into the browser, open up dev tools, did a performance thing. Um, command shift E. Okay, there's our initial, and then we just start scrolling. Do da, do da. Oh, why is it stopping? Don't st oh, because I did command shift E, not command sh command. Bleh. Command shift E just does like a fresh reload and stops as soon as the page has done reloading, and that's not what I wanted to do here. I want it to record. 
Command Shift R to do a fresh refresh. Now I'll start scrolling and see if we get a bunch of LCP events kind of going on as we're moving down the screen. It stopped. Oh, interesting. A little, yeah. Oh, it's. Hmm. Okay. So if we came down here, what's what are we seeing here for? Come on, sunshine. Where's my timings? Oh, I don't see an LCP. Oh, there we go. Chrome did this weird thing on DevTools sometimes where it's like this long spot of nothing being recorded because I don't know where it's fluffing that up from. I think, yeah, so largest contentful paint stopped before we actually started doing the user interaction scrolling and stuff like that. Um, so. I think in this case, it might be because we're doing JavaScript uh, triggered scrolling that it's kind of messing that up because it's oh, not I seeing see. that as like a user input. Um, that being said, it does look like there might be some shifting happening because of the scrolling. Um, yeah, that was the first time we've had CLS. Yeah, it is there. And you do see like on this URL, it there is at least it's not like obnoxious, but there is like in that needs improvement range, which we didn't see on the home page at all. Yeah. I wonder what it is. Is it, you know, it's, it's not, you'd think it wouldn't be lazy loaded images because they would have the oh. space for them would be reserved as they come in because of. Yeah, we can take a look. So a all of these little orange checkered lines, those are when the shifts occurred in the waterfall. So you can see there's like a lot of them. Ooh. If we click on cumulative layout shift, we get to the debug part for that. Oh my so, God, they're all over the place. So here's what we're, we're organizing them by the biggest shift to the smallest. And if you hover over, you see kind of the before and after of like what's happening here. Mm. Mm. I don't really get it, but it's there. Yeah. CLS is a little funkier because it's not necessarily always just the. Um, well, that does sort of look like an image coming in, pushing things down. Maybe it could be. So this is the fun part about CLS is it's not like with LCP, we can say like this is exactly what triggered LCP, right? With CLS, we can say what moved, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what triggered the thing that moved. You know what I mean? Yeah. OK, well, yeah, it could be images. It could be. In fact, if we look back at the waterfall, sometimes that's helpful. Um, Sometimes you can see things lining up right before our orange that kind of clues you in like, okay, maybe that's part of what's causing the shift. And yeah, we do see like a fair amount of it's the images, images Got coming it. in right before these shifts. So yeah. yeah. Well, fun. I can fix that. Yeah. So maybe it's just allocating space for it. Yeah. I mean, maybe the fact that their SVG is, is being weird or something or something in my CSS, maybe they're missing width and height attributes. Maybe there's, yeah, and that's where I'm guessing. Fixable. Yeah, it literally, it literally is like look at every time before there's a yeah. shift. One of these little SVG things. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. It feels fixable. Like just allocate some space for those, and you probably eliminate all of these little things. Yes, Tim, you did it. <laughs> hero, you found all kinds of problems. I got them all documented in our in our little document here. I know it's just shared between me and you. What I'll do is make a blog post of these changes, and we'll. Uh, and I'll, you know, just so that people can be reminded of them, have a little thing if they saw this and want to look back super quickly on something. Yeah. And, and I'll get that out. Um, that's no huge. That's huge. And, you know, we found them all through web page tests. So rock and roll. Rock on, man. So, yeah, if you, uh, yeah, I mean, I think you've got the Notion doc that you mentioned at the beginning. Um, yeah. Happy to help with anything that kind of pops up. But, like, thanks for, uh, Letting us poke at it a bit. Yeah, no, it's, you know, uh, checks in the mail, Tim, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's not awesome. really. Uh, what? What? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, all right, fine. At least a sticker or something. I take a sticker. <laughs> okay, um, okay. All right. So, yeah, so thanks, Chris. Um, you know, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And, like, you know, Chris uh, said, you know, kind of stay tuned. I you know there was that Notion doc where he's been putting stuff down like this plan is to put like a little post and get the video up and yeah. hopefully make some of these improvements and see what happens there too. Mm -hmm. So, and then, yeah, if there's a, uh, I think we're giving away t-shirts on the webpage test side of things. So Ooh, if you sad. like interact with like the, uh, the webpage test, uh, Twitter thing, like DM or follow or whatever, I think you'll get that. Nice. Um, and yeah, Chris, I think you wanted to, 
I know there's a few last minute kind of questions coming in. I can stick around and answer some of those. Chris, I know you might have to hop off and go do another thing, which is fine. But yeah, I won't be able to help answer fancy questions anyway. I like that the you have so, a strong set of commenters, though. They know what they're talking about. These people. No, it is good. It's actually one of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing about like doing these is just watching the conversation <laughs> that happens there because it's like everybody's kind of jumping on like these sort of separate tangents. And then I'm sort of half side like, watching it so I can learn from everybody else. It's great. I dig it. Yeah. All right, Tim, I will see you soon, bud. Thanks awesome. again. And for everybody watching, you know, with, with my underwear on, essentially. <laughs> thanks man all right um yeah i saw like a couple questions i'll try to hop on them here um one was about the render blocking resource status reported in chrome can you get it from the performance api so i know that's on the um so here we put the block i'll go with the actual code for this where they put it Shooby dooby dooby. Yeah, so this isn't, to my knowledge, not exposable anywhere outside of DevTool stuff right now. Um, it's inside of the trace. It's tagged onto like part of the tracing information. Um, so if you're doing like a trace or using Chrome DevTools protocol to interact with the page, um, then that information is presented, but it's not actually exposed in like the performance API or anything like that. Um, so at the moment, you couldn't pull this in that way. However, um, I know, in fact, I think you have may have tweeted about this. I know this is something that they want to be able to do. Um, and gosh, having that in rum data would be super cool, wouldn't it? Um, oh, I should get rid of the DM things. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see here. Yeah, so if you are keen on this for RUM data, here's a GitHub issue. Um, if you go here, um, like upload that, drop some notes in it, just like say, hey, this is something we want in the performance timing API or you know whatever that you know format is. But like um, the more upvotes and the more like people they have requesting this, the more likely it is that that gets prioritized. Uh, and out the door. But I think that would be super sweet, like slick information to have from the rum side of things for sure. Um, oh yeah, if our web page test Twitter stuff is blocked, we can we can unblock that. We can fix that. <laughs> yeah, so this was uh, this was a literally like five minutes before the stream. I was on with Chris this morning and Peter here at uh, Catchpoint and Webpage Test for this morning, going through things, trying to figure out like how we were going to do this because we were trying to get a nice stream for the two of us where we could you know kind of pull in the video and audio and all this stuff and running through all these hoops. And then Chris was like, "Hey, have you checked out this thing called Streamyard?" Uh, and so then we tried StreamYard and it was literally plug and play. So this is StreamYard and it has this really, I don't know, it's just kind of this built in feature, like in the chat box, you can hover over any one of the comments and sort of display it up on the screen and then hide it. And it's slick. It's really nice. It's plug and play. It's, I, it's for me, it's awesome. It doesn't have as many, like you can't do some of the customizations that you can, if you're like super advanced into the, sort of the Twitch sort of things. Um, but for getting something up and running that works well, like out of the box without customization, it worked great. Oh, so for prefetching, is there a downside when prefetching? Is it blocking something or done in parallel? Depends what you mean. Um, if you're talking about preload uh, or prefetch. So preload is used to preload a resource on the current navigation that you know you're going to need. So for example, a JavaScript file that you want to download very quickly or an image file that maybe that's your largest contentful paint. And so you preload it. And what that basically does is, yeah, it makes it kind of jump the queue in terms of priority and importance, which can potentially push out other requests further down. Um, so there is some trade-off there, uh, which is why when we talk about like preloading fonts was one of those first things that everybody's like, preload your fonts. 
And then we realized actually preloading all the fonts is not a good thing. Um, like if you're going to preload fonts, you got to be very selective because you're pushing other resources down, um, starting to compete with getting like your CSS, your JavaScript out that you might need for a display of the page. Um, so preload, you have to be very careful about. Um, if it's prefetch, that is requesting an asset for the next page navigation. Um, there, you mostly just need to be concerned about like not um, spending a ton of the user's bandwidth. Um, prefetched resources are uh, requested at a very, very low priority. Um, like I think it's idle, like when there is no network prior uh, stuff going on, like way after all the current page resources have already been requested, then do the prefetch thing. So prefetch is a little less obnoxious uh, or, or risky, I guess, from that perspective, other than that you might be prefetching things people aren't going to use. All right, so this is on the lady, lady and lazy one. My head is getting, there you go. Um, OK, the question is around loading lazy, not affecting above the fold images, because browsers would recognize the placement of images. Um, now we're finding out they do affect LCP. Do you know if browser making makers are making any effort to automatically disable lazy loading for above the fold images? Not to my, I do not know. I don't know if there's any browser work related to that. I think it could potentially get a little iffy because um, it's almost like a struggle between what the thing, what the indicator is, what you're communicating to the browser that the indicator is supposed to do and what the browser itself decides to do with that. Um, there might be like some issues with sort of, you know, not listening to the user in this case. I I'm not sure. Um, there are absolutely things being done within the different like platforms and CMSs to try and improve that. Um, but yeah, I don't know about browser side of things. I'm sure there's something that could potentially be done to make the impact of it a little less significant. Um, he says as somebody who hasn't actually worked on the browsers themselves. So that could be, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, to my knowledge, there's not work being done in the browser engines around that right now and doing so might get kind of funky from a, you know, developers expect this to do something. And now the browser kind of says, no, we're going to do something else. And I understand developers maybe expected that loading lazy in the viewport wasn't going to result in a degradation of performance, but then potentially it still violates like how it's specified and things like that, which is a big issue um, when things start breaking spec. So I'm not sure. That's a long-winded non-answer. I know. I'm sorry. I wish I had something more concrete for you there. Yeah, if you're curious more about that issue, um, the web.dev link I provided earlier uh, will uh, give you a lot of information. And so uh, will this one that Sia just posted. Um, this is from the WordPress side of things. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I think thanks everybody again for jumping in. I'm going to hop off. Uh, hopefully, everybody enjoyed the CSS tricks thing. I'm curious to see like how the uh, improvements happen um, after the fact, like when Chris has a chance to kind of get to a few of them and get them implemented. But appreciate everybody tuning in and appreciate all the good questions. Um, yeah. And we'll uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks.